Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's Ask the Experts webinar. I'm Allison Phillips, Director of Marketing on Cox Media's corporate team, and I will be your host today. Some quick housekeeping items before I introduce our guest experts here. This presentation is being recorded. You'll receive an email with the recording so you can watch it again at your convenience or share with your teams. We have some really great content prepared for you, and we should have some time for a brief Q&A at the end. So if at any time during the presentation you have a question, just go ahead and type it into the question box on your screen, and we'll get to as many as we can at the end of the call. With that, I'm so excited to introduce you to today's guest experts, Cox Media's own David Gustafson and James May. If you've attended an Ask the Experts event before, you may know that we rarely, if ever, feature our own employees as guest speakers. But with a complicated topic like media measurement, we wanted to give you a chance to ask our experts and hear these details straight from the source. James May, Senior Marketing Director for our Arizona market, has been with Cox Media for 26 years, holding various marketing, research, and leadership roles at both the local market and corporate level. Director of Audience Research, David Gustafson, has been here just two years shy of James, with 24 years of experience across both local and corporate positions. Aside from his reputation as our resident professor, David is a member of multiple advisory groups, including the Ampersand MVPD Research Committee and the VAB Measurement Innovation Task Force. So with 50 years of combined experience here at Cox Media, you can see why we've made an exception to our usual format to showcase the truly incredible depth of insight that these two experts have in the media measurement space. So with that, I'll hand it over to you guys. All right. Well, thanks so much for having us on the show, Allison. I got to say, as I look on screen, I'm still trying to figure out how James is ahead of me two years on the experience front, but seems to still look 10 years younger than I do. I'm, I'm going to wrestle with that one as we go. But more to the point, our goal for the next 30 minutes or so is to tap into some of what James and I have learned and picked up during our combined 50 plus years in the industry and hopefully shed a little light on the complex and honestly sometimes confusing world of audience measurement. And most importantly, what that means for local advertisers. Complex and confusing is a spot on way to describe local TV measurement, DG. And knowing what a fan of alliteration you are, I'll even throw in another word that starts with a C to describe it, critical. So whether you're in my home market of Arizona or in one of the many Cox Media markets across the country, audience measurement is a critical component of understanding the effectiveness of your marketing efforts when it comes to reaching local consumers, regardless of your media mix or the size of your ad budget. So to help put that measurement picture into clear focus for you all today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill down and unpack today's conversation on just 10 things to know about the companies and methods that determine how many of us are watching television in each local market. All right, well, let's kick things off by clarifying what we mean by television. TV continues to change both in the ways we can access programs and the other kinds of content we can get through our TV sets. Our focus today is on what is most often referred to as traditional or linear TV. We tend to like this concise definition from the team at Insider Intelligence, which says that linear TV is TV that is programmed and watched as scheduled through a cable or broadcast network. When it comes to local audience measurement, linear TV includes both live viewing that occurs as programs are airing and also time shifted viewing. For example, if I set my DVR to record the latest episode of Yellowstone on Paramount and then play it back later that night or even three days later, my delayed or time shifted viewing would be considered part of the local linear audience estimate for that program. Right, and by contrast, linear TV audience measurement at the local market level generally does not include viewing to a digital and streaming platform that delivers content to a specific user on demand. So if we continued with the Yellowstone example that DG set up, if I call up that same episode two weeks later on Paramount Plus, my streaming activity would not be counted in the local linear audience numbers. 
So with that context, let's move on to our second thing to know. And let's take a look about how linear TV stacks up against the multitude of media options competing for our time and attention every day. So when we consider TV, streaming, digital video, apps, social media, all of the things um, that are out there, one study found that over the course of just one year, we collectively spend 869 billion, B as in b -b -b billion hours consuming media. <laughs> and so if you're wishing to have your mind blown even more, check out this math. That's the equivalent of 99 million years worth of time. So if you look at this uh, pie chart, that bright yellow piece, um, you can see about mm, 23 million of those years or 205 billion hours were spent watching linear TV, giving traditional TV the largest single slice of the overall media pie. And fun fact for you guys, at least 10 billion of those hours were dedicated to law and order reruns. Dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> These are their stories. And, and, and my story is I probably account for about half of those Law & Order reruns. Uh, but seriously, James, I think the technical term here for what you described is a boatload of time. That is certainly a large amount of time. And, and those numbers may surprise some people, especially given the increasing popularity of streaming which, by the way, has also become an increasingly important part of the Cox Media portfolio. And a separate analysis from the end of 2023 actually reinforces what you described. When we isolate just the time spent viewing linear TV and connected TV, which is another term for streaming, linear consistently holds a three to two advantage, attracting about 60% of that combined TV time. And so while these high level stats can be helpful in understanding the overall importance of linear TV as part of a multimedia marketing strategy, the key to using TV effectively is understanding what's happening in your local market. Well said, as usual, DG. Um, at least half a dozen companies, if you think about it, are routinely discussed as viable options for providing national TV measurement. But like it or not, when you get down to the local market discussion, it still comes down to two companies. And like any good battle, this one has an established champ and then an up and coming challenger. So let's start with the established champ, Nielsen. Uh, this is a company that proudly touts itself as having provided TV ratings for more than 50 years. And as the longstanding incumbent in this space, Nielsen is deeply ingrained, as you guys know, in many of the processes and systems used to facilitate and evaluate local TV campaigns. Uh, but the way that Nielsen measures local TV can really vary depending on the market. So technically, there are like five unique flavors, if you will, of Nielsen uh, local TV methodology. But each one of these can be categorized in one of two buckets, either metered or non-metered. The key difference is that for metered markets, what Nielsen does is they actively go out into the communities in the marketplace and recruit panel homes in an effort to build a sample that's representative of the population and the demographic makeup of the market. Nielsen will go in and install meters in those panel homes and they can track which networks and programs are being watched. And the data from those panel homes are then modeled to project just overall viewing for the market. And then in the other bucket, the non-metered markets, Nielsen does not recruit panel homes, but what they do instead is they rely on what technically is known as return path data or RPD, but we more commonly refer to it as set-top box data, right? So Nielsen partners with cable companies and satellite companies to collect and gather the set-top box data. They aggregate the results in a privacy safe uh, manner, and then they use the data to project viewing for those markets. Yeah, and, and James, continuing with that, Nielsen's main competitor in the local TV measurement space relies even more heavily on set-top box data. So compared to Nielsen, Comscore is still the relative newcomer here, but the company formerly known as Rintrack has now more than a decade of proven viability in the local viewership space. And during that time, Comscore has effectively leveraged two key differentiators to make inroads. First is what we would describe as consistent simplicity. 
compared to the five different flavors, James, that you mentioned of Nielsen measurement, Comscore from the start has used a single set-top box-based methodology for every local market. And that uniform approach feeds the second differentiator, which is scale. By using return path or set-top box data in every market, Comscore has positively positioned its self-described massive and passive methodology perhaps even prompting Nielsen to accelerate its own plans to acquire and integrate more set-top box data, particularly in those smaller markets where Nielsen had previously relied on handwritten paper diaries to determine how many people were watching. Oh, those were the days, weren't they? Interestingly, one of the more fascinating decisions from Comscore's early efforts was choosing not to differentiate how local markets are defined. And that takes us to our next topic. What makes local TV local? And when defining the market boundaries that make local local, Comscore initially chose to directly license Nielsen's trademarked designated market areas or DMAs. Nielsen DMAs are county-based groupings determined by the home city of the broadcast TV stations receiving the largest share of viewing within the county. As an example, my home state of Connecticut, pictured here, has eight counties. Seven of those counties are assigned to Nielsen's Hartford and New Haven DMA because the broadcast stations in those two cities receive the largest amount of over-the-air viewing. Down in the bottom corner, though, Fairfield County is actually assigned to the New York DMA because more over-the-air tuning goes to broadcast affiliates based in New York City. And Nielsen uses this approach to divide the country into 210 different local DMAs. So a couple years ago, um, what Comscore decided to do was decouple from Nielsen's DMA definitions and kind of go off and do their own thing with zip code based TV market de definitions. Like Nielsen, Comscore's approach also sl slices up the country into 210 unique local markets. But within that, there can be slight differences uh, in ge uh, geographic boundaries, and sometimes even more noticeable differences in terms of market rank and overall population. So for this example, I'm gonna use my home markets. Nielsen currently has Phoenix as the 11th largest DMA in the country with just shy of 2.2 million total TV households. By comparison, Comscore ranks Phoenix as the 13th largest TV market with just under 1.5 million TV households. Nielsen ranks Tucson in the southern part of uh, their state of Arizona as DMA 65 with nearly half a million TV households. Then Comscore on the other hand, lists Tucson as market number 70 with a household population of about 356,000. So, I know what you are thinking to yourself, self, why is there such a drastic difference? How can this be? Is this like a multiverse scenario? <laughs> well, no, sadly for the geeks out there, there's no dual universes here. Uh, the disparities in market rank and more specifically in the number of homes within a market are key to exploring our next topic. How do Nielsen and Comscore view the local landscape differently? So the biggest single difference stems from which types of homes are each company includes when defining mark the market and estimating the viewership of that market. So historically, the local TV universe included just three different kinds of households. Homes with wired cable, like Cox, homes with satellite service, like a DTV or a DISH, and then uh, over the air or OTA homes, as the cool kids like to refer to them, OTA homes don't subscribe to cable or satellite, but are able to receive local broadcast stations. More recently though, a growing portion of local market households fall outside of all those legacy categories. Nielsen was the first to label these as broadband only, or BBO homes is more typically referred to, you may have heard before. BBO homes can access TV programming through streaming apps, but they do not subscribe to cable, they don't subscribe to broadcast or to satellite, and they don't have an antenna for getting local broadcast signals over the air. Because of technology advances and changes in how we consume media, BBO homes have become a distinct portion of every local marketplace. 
Well, I'll leave it to James to work in a multiverse reference here. That was we're very well done. And uh, an excellent point on how the market is defined in is Nielsen added those BBO homes into local measurement over the past few years. The effect was that nearly every DMA seemed to grow in size almost overnight as those BBO homes were added into the definition. And Comscore initially stuck with the legacy practice of excluding BBO homes when they first introduced their separate TV market definitions. But last year, Comscore expanded to include a subset of what Nielsen has defined as BBO. Nielsen's current definition of BBO homes includes any non-cable, non-satellite, non-OTA home that simply has the ability to stream some form of programming content to the TV set through a broadband internet connection. Comscore has chosen to restrict the scope of their definition to include only those broadband homes that subscribe to what are known as virtual MVPD services. These VMVPD, how about that for what the cool kids say, James? These VMVPD services, like YouTube TV or DirecTV Stream, for example, deliver a cable-like bundle of linear channels just through the broadband connection. So, while well, now that we've cleared that right up, uh, let's keep the party going with our next topic, right? So our next topic, we're focusing on a key difference in how the two services report demographic viewership. Local TV audience estimates are most commonly evaluated in one of two ways. So we have household estimates, which give an indication of how many homes in the market were tuned in. And then we have demographic estimates or demo estimates that speak to how a network or a program performed within a particular age and gender target, like women 18 to 49 or adults 25 to 54, for example. But the way those, those demo numbers are measured and reported is certainly one of the biggest differences between the two local TV measurement providers. So Nielsen attempts to provide persons-based estimates for age and gender targets. So what this means is that Nielsen numbers for adults 25, 54 reflect the estimated number of people in that age group who are watching. Now Comscore, on the other hand, who has historically been household-based, even for demos, and that doesn't necessarily mean that all Comscore households are living in a cramped quarters as the visual on the screen might suggest. What this means is that Comscore's numbers for adults 25, 15, 4 reflect the estimated tuning among homes in the market that have at least one adult in that age group. This distinction, it's, it's so important for all of you, for advertisers who may be wanting to compare impressions delivery, cost per thousand, and other data points across the two providers, since the population of people ages 2554 is typically much different from the count of homes containing an adult in that age range. Yeah, James, I don't know if that graphic was like the HGTV, like tiny homes uh, program or what we were looking at there, but it seemed like they were at least getting along well, kind of a yeah. hand-holding kumbaya kind of thing happening there. Um, but seriously, as we move on to our next topic and, and think about the progression of what we've discussed to this point from the differences in demographic reporting to the varying interpretations of which homes should even be included when defining the market, all that points us to the importance of looking at impressions in local TV. And that's a topic we've discussed on the Cox Media blog as far back as 2016. As we've mentioned, Comscore and Nielsen calculate results in sometimes very different ways, but the two services do share a basic commonality around impressions. For quick review, an impression in local TV at a high level is just a household or in other cases, an individual viewer exposed to a program network or more importantly for advertisers to the actual advertisement that's part of the campaign. The legacy TV standard of converting impressions to rating points adds unnecessary mathematical complexity without necessarily providing any additional clarity around the audience being delivered. Focusing on impressions instead of ratings eliminates the division problem as well as avoids potential confusion surrounding mismatched populations. From a quantity perspective, for example, using impression counts instead of percentages 
allows for more direct comparisons of audience delivery across, across different geographies. No additional information is needed to determine that an audience of 1,000 viewers in San Diego is equal in size to an audience of 1,000 viewers in Gainesville, Florida. On top of that, impressions can also serve as an equalizer of sorts across different media platforms. Yes, there is still plenty of room for discussion around the relative quality and value of impressions across linear TV, streaming, and digital platforms, but bypassing ratings in favor of impressions more easily supports a local marketplace that continues to shift more toward an audience-based mindset. And luckily we can always count on you, DG, to make a great impression, right? <laughs> Or, or sometimes a gross impression. What right? yet on this webinar? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> so, um, so anyway, uh, that step by itself with the importance of impressions, it doesn't alleviate every challenge of local TV measurement. So on the Comscore side, we talked about uh, the household-based reporting of demographic viewership and their distinct market definitions and populations. Well, they still face an uphill battle to supersede Nielsen's DMA definitions, which remain top of mind for many uh, in, our, in our industry. Also, Comscore's heavy reliance on set-top box data instead of a recruited panel of homes in the market what that means is uh, for some segments of the market, they have to be heavily modeled instead of being directly measured. So a great example of this is over the air viewing, which obviously can't be measured by a set-top box. Therefore, Comscore will use an algorithm to model that portion of the viewing to the markets. But to be fair, Nielsen faces very similar challenges in the non-metered markets where it relies most heavily on set-top box data. And then on the Nielsen side, their efforts to report demographic viewership at a person's level require a significant reliance on a modeling approach known as viewer assignment. Arguably, and the biggest Nielsen issue facing many media markets today is the high occurrence of missing audiences. For example, an analysis conducted uh, by our Cox Media teams in San Diego and Las Vegas found that depending on which demographic you're analyzing, as much as 75% of the individual quarter hours during a given month may come back with zero reported audience. And that is a sometimes staggering number and not surprisingly, James, the, the ability for Nielsen to address those shortcomings that are leading to so many zeros is a major part of their near-term roadmap for improving local TV measurement. In the largest metered markets where zeros are most prevalent today, Nielsen will begin incorporating set-top set -top box data. We'll try saying that fast a few times. Set-top box data into local measurement later this year to supplement the existing panels. For other markets where some of the set-top box data is already being used along with data from the in-market meters, Nielsen plans to expand how broadly that set-top box info can be applied when it comes to calculating full market viewership. Oh, and remember those broadband-only homes we mentioned earlier, Nielsen also appears to be considering a redefinition of how certain types of homes are classified in each DMA, especially homes that receive linear TV programming through a virtual provider like YouTube TV or direct TV stream. So that may ultimately later this year shift around some of the percentage distributions that Nielsen reports in each DMA. From the Comscore perspective, work continues on a personification effort that will supplement the existing household-based demographic reporting that we mentioned and also provide through other means separate persons-based viewership estimates. Perhaps more intriguing though from the Comscore side are indications that they're actively working toward a cross-platform measurement solution for local markets and that could blend their TV viewership information with other audience metrics for other media and maybe get closer to the consolidated view of a multi-screen or multi-platform campaign sometime in the hopefully not too distant future. There's a lot going on uh, and our Cox Media teams throughout the country are keeping a watchful eye on the developments. But for today, let's start to wrap up our conversation with a question we get fairly often, which is, 
which measurement service does Cox Media recommend for evaluating local TV viewership? Well, we talked about this and it kind of comes down to paraphrasing, paraphrasing music legend Dave Mason. There ain't no good guys, there ain't no bad guys, there's just Nielsen and Comscore and they just disagree. Each company has a unique approach, both have merits and limitations, and both are working to improve their local TV services as part of ongoing efforts to achieve industry accreditation. Yeah. And so our position, it remains consistent where it really has been for nearly a decade. We're here to educate. We're not here to endorse one or the other. So uh, Cox Media, we continue to use and analyze data from both providers. And it just gives us a better picture, a better understanding of the TV uh, viewership dynamics in the markets and the clients that we serve. So that's great news for local advertisers like such as yourselves. Uh, because when you're ready to navigate the nuances behind the numbers of your next campaign, we're here to help. Your local Cox Media team can help customize the approach and that best suits what you're trying to achieve. But until then, uh, we hope that you have enjoyed our webinar just a fraction as much as we've enjoyed putting it together. And we hope that this content maybe left you with a something or two to noodle on and maybe even sparked uh, some follow-up questions that we'd be happy to answer. Yeah, James, I agree with that. And we definitely appreciate this opportunity to talk local TV and uh, do some of what we tend to do whenever we get together and chat. So thanks for sharing some time with us. I'm glad each of you could join us. And um, James, appreciate all the expertise you shared. Enjoy the conversation, my friend. Uh, same, Professor Singh. Uh, we also uh, we, we don't want to be remiss to thank our producer, Sarah Brassfield, uh, for coordinating all of the logistics. And of course, our hostess with the mostest, Allison Phillips. Thanks, guys. Uh, it is very clear that you guys have worked together for a long time. <laughs> thank sure. you for that. It was fascinating um, and very comprehensive. We really appreciate it. Um, all right. We do have a few minutes for some questions. Uh, we know that many of you submitted questions when you registered for this session, so we'll go ahead and start with those. Um, but if you do have a question you'd like to ask our resident media measurement experts, go ahead and put it in the question box on your screen. All right, this first question is for you, DG. Why doesn't Cox provide set-top box data to Nielsen, and are there plans to do so in the future? Oh, I, I get the easy question right out of the gate. All right. Uh, no, that's actually, it's a really interesting one, and I, I think you have to start by understanding just how complex this whole ecosystem is. That's a word I don't think we used yet, uh, James, so we score one for us with ecosystem here, but seriously, it is very complex working with and making sense of set-top box tuning data from the measurement company perspective, and companies like ours sometimes have to design new processes to deliver data and those measurement companies then have to put in significant amounts of effort to translate to aggregate and then be able to project all the information from multiple partners into something that makes sense at the full market level and, and so at this point the timing and opportunity have come together for cox to connect all that wiring with comscore and yeah we'll see what the future holds as far as anything beyond that all right Thank you. All right, James, this one's yours. Are there any significant emerging competitors to Nielsen and Comscore? Ooh, really good question. So certainly um, when we look at the, the national level in terms of providing viewership estimates uh, for the total US, yes, absolutely. There are several um, existing competitors and emerging competitors. Uh, just to give you an example of this, a video amp, um, is, which is a company, a measurement service, made some news recently uh, when their audience estimates for a show on CNN called King Charles, who is co-hosted by Charles, no, none other than Arizona favorite Charles Barkley, um, when they noticed that uh, the, the, their estimates, video app estimates for King Charles were noticeably higher than what Nielsen projected, prompting uh, Charles Barkley to utter some choice words about what he thought about the Nielsen data. I believe it's Charles Barkley, right? Um, to say what's on his mind. Uh, at the local market level though, if you think about it, uh, you know, it's it's hard to 
provide the scale and there's a lot that has to go into measuring uh, at a local market level. Um, so Nielsen and Comscore are really the, the primary players at this point. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, DG, last one. Which service yields lower CPMs if the rates are assumed the same? Ah, yeah, cutting right to the chase of uh, the, the advertising and marketing world here. That's a, like the others, uh, this is a fascinating question and probably, you know, we could answer it in the same way, whether we're thinking of CPM from an impressions perspective or cost per point, CPP from a, a rating point perspective. And it, in either case, it really doesn't, the question doesn't lend itself well to a blanket answer. Those metrics can vary widely from market to market, program to program, and sometimes influenced by the audience estimates, but also by just other factors like supply and demand and how that impacts pricing for pieces of inventory. So I think the biggest thing we'd call out is that if doing a comparison, pay attention to those differences that we talked about in the webinar in population and particularly with regard to the age and gender demos because that population difference is going to drive a comparison, particularly from an impression standpoint, that makes those not necessarily apples to apples like we discussed. So um, I'll, I'll close on that one by saying, you know, not really much of a specific answer, but we're always happy to dig into specific examples at the individual market level uh, if somebody wants to reach out either to James and me or to your team on the Cox Media side locally, we're happy to dig more into that and, and, and provide you with more of a relevant answer for your specific situation. Awesome. All right, well, that's all the time we have for today. I know we didn't get to all of the questions, um, but I do have it on good authority that these guys are willing to answer those questions in a blog article that we'll post to the Cox Media blog soon. So be on the lookout for that if we didn't get to your question. Um, and it, again, as a quick reminder, a recording of today's webinar will be emailed to you. Um, and we'll be back in a few months with another guest expert or two and uh, more great content. So we hope you'll be able to join us again then. In the meantime, uh, please check out our website for articles, ebooks, um, and of course, recordings of our past Ask the Experts webinars. Um, and as always, for any additional questions regarding today's content, please contact your Cox Media consultant. If you're not a current customer, you can visit coxmedia.com to connect with one of our media experts. Um, DG, James, thank you both again. Um, and everyone who's here today, thank you. And we look forward to seeing you next time.